Hello, wealthy wives and friends. It's Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying a Rich Man. How are you doing today, my wealthy wives and friends? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it is a beautiful sunny day here in South Florida. A little cooler, which I do love. You know, it's nice when we have those breaks from the super hot, humid weather and things are a little chillier. Got to put on some long sleeves. I know if it's chilly down here, I, I've said this before in other videos and audios, that if it's chilly down here, it's got to be freezing up north. So once again, I am sending those of you up north some warmth and sunshine. Because I guess I'm from the Midwest and I know this time of year it is mostly gray and cold. So I'm thinking of you here in sunny Florida. But before we get started, let's go ahead and do our mantra. Once again, because I want you guys in that energy space of receiving and recognizing who you are. So go ahead. You guys know the drill. Make sure you are sitting down, eyes closed, shoulders relaxed. Make sure your face is relaxed, jaw relaxed. No tension, just oh, you're at ease and relaxing. Now take a deep breath with me, breathing in. Let it go. And say it with me. I am a wealthy wife. I am a wealthy wife. And I am a wealthy wife. Take another deep breath, breathing in. And let it go. Once again, a lot of energy to kind of float around you. Sink, then sink into your energy field, your vibration, your aura. And once again, you are a wealthy wife. If your goal is once again to become literally a wife, go into a contract with a man who you do love and care for and who loves and cares for you, and you guys can have a vision of building something really great together or expanding on what he's already done and also expanding on what you may have done as well, then Wealthy Wife is definitely a space that you want to be in. But I say it as I always do. This is also for women that are ready to actually just be in that wealthy mind state to be able to attract the kind of men to you that have the energy and the ability to truly help you take your life next level. I'll say it again. The wealthy mindset is nothing like a poverty or, or, or a middle class mindset because it tends to be broader, more open minded and more able to receive and to put into action the things that it wants to do. You know, wealthy people do not become wealthy by accident. Those trust fund babies, guess what? They may not be the ones out there adding to the trust fund, so to speak. Some of them do, some of them don't. But somebody in their history had to be the one that had the initiative, the drive, determination, and fearlessness to make the money that they're living off of now. And for those that are still adding and contributing to their family's wealth, if they are people that actually come from affluence, um, they still have to have the right mindset. And if you're coming out of poverty and middle class mindsets, making that new money, so to speak, you had to have a shift in your thinking. And had to have that space of understanding that there are no excuses. I know sometimes people don't like to hear that, but you know, it doesn't matter what you do or don't want to hear. Truth is truth. Things only happen in our lives when we actually take action. Well, like I said, first, decide, have the vision, decide that's what you want to do. Then learn the action steps, have the strategy to take you to your next level. And you guys, at each level, you're going to be taking up new strategies, learning new things to keep advancing you forward. It doesn't stop. It doesn't. I'm living proof. It doesn't stop. I'm still learning and growing. And anybody that works with me understands that when they come in and we're working with me, that, you know, I'm offering you guys the keys and sometimes to help open the door for you and show you how to walk through it. Sometimes people are already on the other side. Now they just need the skill set to take themselves to their next level. It is a growth process. So whether you are in the beginning, just getting started, or if you're already established and just ready now to change your focus, we can work together. Not a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. But today I want to talk about something because I mean, I've been really thinking about this. You know, as I told you guys, this year, Wealthy Wife, and we're focusing on the Wealthy Wife quadrant, and that is personal brand, personal brand of beauty, persona. Excuse me, I always get the hiccups when I'm talking. Personal brand of beauty, persona, personal presence, and prosperity. And the other day I was sitting here thinking because, you know, you guys, I'm getting all psyched about, you know, 
getting together with my photographer, started planning some concepts and ideas for photo shoots. Um, matter of fact, we're supposed to be going to um, this big costume warehouse. I believe we're going today. She and I are talking about it, but it's going to depend on our schedules because I got a ton of stuff to catch up on. And so does she. But either way, so we're woke up in the morning thinking about, you know what, having the chance to go to this big warehouse where they have all these different costumes and looks because I want this year to also be a, a year of pleasure and play. Obviously, luxury and opulence is part of that process too. But I want the photo shoots to be, you know, some standard stuff that's going to be needed. But I also want to play. You know, the whole idea of having your personal brand of beauty is understanding how to express your personality. So when I woke up yesterday morning, it came to me. You, yes, you are living art. That's why you guys, I, I, I talk so much about defining your own essence of beauty and who you are and stop trying to copycat everybody else's looks. So boring. Everybody's trying to look like everybody. Not everybody. I'm not generalizing that to all people because obviously it's not, not everybody wants to look like everybody else. But so many people lack imagination when it comes to expressing themselves. They're always trying to copycat somebody else, hoping to obtain sometimes the results that somebody else is having. That can work a little bit. Sometimes, because there's nothing wrong with admiring how somebody looks, maybe wanting to take some of the things they're doing and add it to your personal brand of beauty. But to go out there and try to copycat it down to looking, because I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine. She actually works for um, one of the med spas down here, which, you know, South Florida has like a one on every corner, it seems, in certain spots. The malls have them. They're all over the place. But, you know, she was saying how people come in and they're getting the same lip injections. They're getting the same, you know, Botox done. They're getting, I mean, everybody, she goes, they walk out of looking like, like it's a factory that's producing the same face sometimes. And it's the truth. You guys have seen people at times who've had different, you know, work done on their face. And the plastic surgeons will say it. Somebody's coming in asking for, you know, Kim Kardashian lips or somebody's eyebrows or somebody's nose or somebody's cheekbones. <coughs> Excuse me, because they don't like their own. Okay, remember this. The original person who has the part that you want to copy is going to look dynamic. And even Kim Kardashian, the ones we're talking about, they've had work done. Because I've seen you've seen the before and after pictures of Kim. Once again, nothing wrong with enhancement. I, like I said, I've seen some beautiful work done. Absolutely. Absolutely. But even if you're going to do that, you can understand that. How are you going to still make your, make your, make your look you? You know, remember, I told you guys, when you're talking about dating affluent men, they're looking for experiences. These men can afford everything. The truly affluent ones can. Anything. Everything. They have access to, I told you, beautiful women are a dime a dozen in their world. And yes, beauty is a wonderful thing, and beauty is definitely part of the process. But it doesn't have to be copycat beauty. Because if you're a copycat, guess what? You're replaceable. You are. You know, because they get tired of your personality. They can, and then if, if your look happens to be the look that they want in that particular moment, they'll go back. What they're going to do is find another one who's going to look just like you and slide her into your position. So it really is about finding things about you that are unique because they want an experience, just like you guys want the experience. That's why you want to be involved with these men, because you want to experience life in a different way that you may not have had an opportunity to, to express and experience. So when I talk about that you are living art, and, you know, in reference to the photo shoots and really bringing women down here to South Florida and playing and expressing and experience who you are in your dynamic space and who you are in all your glory. My cat, why do you always decide you want to rub it against me and I got a black outfit on? White cat, black clothes. Not always a good mix, okay? I'm sure we'll have something to say. But let me get back to topic. So when I say you are living art and the, the tagline literally is you are living art, become the masterpiece you are meant to be. Let me say that again. You are living art. Become the masterpiece you are meant to be. Because that's just it, ladies. Have you figured this out yet? I want you to be the most dynamic, gorgeous, phenomenal, beautiful, sexy, fun, playful, prosperous, abundant, loved, well-loved, honored, adored, adorned woman out there based upon who you are. And that's why I ask the question constantly, who are you? Because truthfully, if you don't have a clue on that, it is hard to attract the kind of men that you're going to want to be with. Because you're going to want to attract all kind of weirdos or people that are inappropriate for you. Because you haven't defined yourself. You are unique. You are one of a kind. Say it again. Even if you're an identical twin, you are still one of a kind because you are a different personality living inside that body. I've mentioned this before because I went to school, I told you, with like five sets of twins. 
actually six sets because they're a set of identical twins a year older than me. So, and five of those six sets of twins were identical twins. There was one set of eternal twins, a, 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 a brother and sister, but the rest of them were identicals. And like I said, as you get to know, when you first see them, you're like going, God, they look exactly alike. But as you got to know them, you realize they look nothing alike. You know, they look similar, but they didn't look it. But you really can see a difference because the personalities, you know, form the facial expressions. They form the, the how they hold their bodies and their body language is different because they're different personalities. So once you get to know a set of identical twins, you understand that they're really not identical. Uh, once, like I said, as they start to develop the personalities. So if an identical twin, as they start to grow up and become their own person, don't look exactly alike, what about you who really has your own, you know, unique style and and, and unique look? Why would you not capitalize on that? Like I said, you guys want to date affluent men. You want to stand out. You want to be somebody that a man wants to really get to know and become his muse and to be somebody that just inspires a man to want to do for you and have you with him. And also be in that space that you're also going to be affecting the other people very positively around you. That comes from you embracing you. And I love that. You are living art. That that came, I I love that. You know, because when you think of art, what do you think about? You think of talent. You think of beauty. You think of you think of things that when you go, let's say, for example, you go to museums, because I do go to museums periodically. And you I I love walking into museums. And I remember I was um up in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, and they have a museum they're called Norton. And Norton is a big museum, which I'm I'm hoping they're done with all the reconstruction because they are actually have a chance to um <coughs> go back up there and really look. But they have all these different areas, you know, you know, Chinese art, African art, um, Renaissance, I mean all these different things. And I remember I had gone into this section with the Renaissance paintings. Oh my gosh. If you you know the the level of skill and talent that these artists, these painters had and the sculptors, oh my gosh, are you guys, I, I can't even express in words just the the richness and beauty and just, oh my God, amazing. You know how amazing these pictures are. And they're huge, huge canvases. And I remember I was, and I was walking through and I remember you, if at a certain distance, you look at the pictures and some of the, the people look alive. I'm not kidding. There, the, the, the detailing is from a distance. You can't even tell it's a painting. It looks like a port, like a, like a photograph, or sometimes it looks like the person literally is alive in the picture. That's just how, how detailed and beautiful the mixing was. You have to literally get up to the picture sometimes and be able to see the brush strokes or see the detail that there's a, it's a canvas. I mean, I didn't know that cause you know, I've been to museums, you know, where I'm from back in Ohio. And I've seen gorgeous artwork there. Oh my God, there's a, there was a section there that has, you know, that featured black artists over, over the time. And I don't like using the word black or African Americans because you guys, it's an inappropriate term for us. We are not a color. I know, don't get me started, right? But we're not, we're not. That's an inappropriate. So that's why I use the word people of, of color. And that's not, that, that's just the way I do it. But anyway, I, I digress. But they featured these different artists. And I remember I went in there and there was this gentleman, this older, um, he, he's passed away, but he was a very well-known artist back in the day. His pictures too. I mean, and I don't know if he, he used, he did his stuff in black and white. I don't know if it was charcoal he used. I forget the medium that he used to create his pictures. But I remember he had did a picture of this um, elderly man of color. And literally, you could see the pores in the man's skin, the, like the stubble of his beard. And I remember in the corner, there were cobwebs. And literally, the cobwebs looked like you needed to wipe them off the picture. They looked that real. But that's what I'm saying about art. When you when you when somebody is super talented, and you get in and you're seeing the artwork, and it just takes your breath away. Because you're thinking, oh my God, how did they create that? I mean, I could even do a stick figure that doesn't look like it like looked all lopsided. But here is this masterpiece that I'm standing in front of that might be hundreds of years old. And it's still as vibrant and beautiful and gorgeous and breathtaking as it was when it was first created. Matter of fact, um, my photographer, her father is an artist and I've seen, cause she has um, some of his pictures here and they're reproductions of his pictures. But this gentleman in you know, this time period, he has the skill set of the Renaissance masters. I mean, his pictures, her father's pictures are Oh, insanely gorgeous. All right. But I'm just saying 
to have that level of skill, to have that level of belief in your craft and what you're doing, that you can take that energy inside of you and it bubbles out of you that you have to express it in a way that leaves people in awe of you. Ladies, that's you. That's you. How, I just, how can I explain this to you and have you guys hear me? That's you. You're that living work of art. The color of your skin, the color of your eyes, the shape of your face, your hair, how you move, how you walk, the sound of your voice. That's living art. How you, how you decide to adorn yourself, how you dress. What is the energy that you're giving off? Because some of you have spent so much time out there trying to blend in or disappear that you are, you're not even a blank canvas. You're not, you're, you're not even there because you spend so much time hiding out. I don't want you guys hiding. Like I said, you're following me because you want to find a way to be noticed and to be seen. So you can't be seen and still try to hide. It doesn't work. You know, you can't do both. Now, you can periodically disappear because God knows, I told you guys, I can ghost in a heartbeat when I get tired of doing stuff. I can. I, I remember I mentioned one of my buddies because I hadn't, hadn't been to my, my Starbucks in a while. And he literally were at the table talking. There's three of us, four of us sitting there, me and the three of the guys. And the one, he looked at me, he goes, where do you disappear to? He goes, I haven't seen you in months. I'm like, I know. He goes, I'm trying to think you work for the CIA. I'm like, I go, if I did, I couldn't tell you. He started laughing. I go, because I had to kill you. He fell out laughing. I go, yes, a secret. I can't tell you that stuff. And we just, you know, just playing back and forth. But that's me. I'm very mysterious. I mean, I can be there and be there for weeks and months on end when I choose to be, because I do love going there. And then I can just vanish. But here's the thing. When I'm not there, they miss my presence. You know, things are different. They miss having me there for conversation. They miss me be there to just, I don't know, take in, you know, what, how, whatever my presence is. You know, the, the, the art that I bring, that is me. Because it's always fun when I haven't seen them in a while just to see how happy they are to see me. And that makes me feel good because I know the impact I have on them is a positive one. You know, it's something that when you see someone, they meet you, they hug you, and they squeeze you tight, and they give you a big old smile or kiss on the cheek. Where have you been? We've missed you. Or don't be gone so long. We miss you. So there is an art to coming and going. You just, you know what I'm saying? There's art to that as well. But you've got to get to that phase. And that's one of the things, like I said, one of the things I want to focus on this year with Wealthy Wife is the fact that, you know, you understand and are cultivating your personal brand of beauty. You know, part of it is your sensuality and sexuality. I know women are still so scared of their sexuality. And I realize sometimes you guys are scared of the whole idea of sensuality and sexuality. sexuality. It's because you guys really have no idea what you're doing with your bodies, how to, how to, how to express yourself in reference to men. Because when I hear women telling me that they're going on these dates and men are expecting sex because they bought them dinner, y'all are out of control, okay? Because, what? I'm serious. Just because he buys you dinner, he shouldn't be expecting to lay up with you just because he bought you a damn meal? Seriously? Where are you guys finding these men? I'm serious. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm out there in the world. I realize it exists. But seriously? And some of you feel obligated to do it? Why? And you feel obligated because you know what? You're not taking control of your sexuality in your body. I told you guys, if you understood what your, what it really, what sexual energy really, really is, you would be more selective as to who you're sharing it with. That is your creative force. That is the energy that actually, especially as a woman, that is our magic. Okay. That is what makes us vibrant. That is what makes us makes us men magnet, makes us money magnet. It does all kinds of things that draw stuff to us in reference to the law of attraction. Because we have a womb, because we have inside of us a womb and ovaries and fallopian tubes and all these things that make up that beautiful system inside of us, we have the space for creation. We are like the universe. The universe is dark and quiet and whatever it is out there, guess what? That same energy exists inside of us. So why would you be just giving that away to any Tom, Dick, and fucking Harry? Say it again. They plug into us to draw energy from us. We fuel them. Yes, they plug in. It can definitely fuel us. Like I said, I love sex. Sex is fantastic. But not just anybody's plugging into me. I spend way too much time cultivating me. 
to just let anybody plug himself in there with whatever he wants to bring to me. Ain't happening. Okay? Not saying they've been perfect in my past. I've had some interesting people in my past for sure. You know, we've all had a couple boyfriends or two that were kind of going, mm, I may not have, may have should have thought that out a little bit longer. But whatever. We all have had that learning curve. But as I've gotten older and definitely wiser and understanding how to truly honor and appreciate myself, because I am living art. I am a creatress. I am that goddess space. So not just anybody gets to plug into me and pull from me. And if you guys, like I said, understood that clearly, you would, like I said, once again, stop allowing men to just be all up on you, all up in you, just because. Or if you're doing it, you're going to be far more st strategic about it. You're going to understand the why you're doing it and how it's going to benefit you to do it. And it's not just because he bought you a damn meal. And also, guys, what's up with this coffee date stuff and just going out for a drink? What is that? I mean, I, I really, I have to, I have to laugh because I'm like, what? what, you guys are wondering why you're having difficulty to get him in to take you out on real dates because you guys settle for the bullshit. And don't sit there and tell me that men are going to take you on a real date. I go on real dates on a regular basis when I'm dating. Because if a man asks me, can we meet for coffee? My first response is no. I do coffee with my girlfriends. I can do coffee by myself. I want to, we're going to go out to dinner. We're going to sit down and have a conversation. I want to get to know you. And it's not over coffee. And if he balks on that idea and, well, you know, what if I do, then you know what? We're, we're not a good fit. We'll just, I'm not going to waste my time. Why am I going to get myself all dressed up, put on makeup, comb, you know, you know, make sure the hair looks even extra special? Why am I going to make myself look extra for a cup of damn coffee? Are you joking? Or some drink at a bar? Are you joking? So you guys got to treat yourselves better. People will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. Yeah, I'm on a soapbox today because I'm, that irritates me when I hear that. You guys settle for so little. Why? Like I said, you're living art. You are a, a masterpiece in the making if you haven't figured that out yet. Why would you let people treat you like you're just some scrap of paper? Why? They're going to scribble some notes on and, and throw some place and forget about. Why? Why? I'm serious. This is a very valid question. Why? If you want men to treat you differently, you need to treat you differently. If you want to be able to date men and have men, <clears throat> excuse me, and don't tell me it be based upon where you live, that's just how it is. No, it's not. I date men from all around this planet. Remember, I'm in South Florida. I date men from all around this planet. African, Israel. Africa, Israel, which I, I don't know where Israel sits right now. I'm off the chart. Um, I date men from Europe. I date men from the UK. I date men from, you know, all across this country. I'm sure I'm missing some spots, but I've dated men from all around the world. Uh, and guess what? We go out to dinner. Guess what? They understand that if you're going to see me over a period of time, there is a courtship involved in spending time with me. That's how it's done. I'm a lady. I'm a woman. You know, if I do cuss like a sailor some days, I'm still a lady. I have expectations. I know that the time you spend with me, I'm going to refresh you. You are going to feel revitalized after you leave, just having, having to spend time with me. So I said, that's why my guys miss me when I don't go to my Starbucks or, at the, or a few other spots I go to. That's why when I show up there, I mean, literally, if you could see how they, I mean, I get these big, huge hugs from these guys. They're like, where have you been? Because they missed the energy that I bring when I'm around. So why would I not expect to be treated beautifully? To me, it's a no-brainer. It's just a no-brainer. So once again, if you want men to treat you better, if you guys want to understand how to allow, have men court you, you have to set the guidelines for that. I know you guys love dating by numbers. You know, it's a numbers game. But still, if you guys are still getting trash dates, it's not a number game. That's just, you're just spinning your wheels and wasting your time and exhausting yourselves. Strategy. I talk about it constantly. You have to have a strategy. You need to understand who you are. You need to understand what you want and desire and who it is that you want to spend time with. You know, I, I date with strategy. I pick 
and plan. I pick and choose the men I spend time with. I'm not for every man. Not every man is for me. I'm not every man's type. Not every man is my type. And believe me, guys, does not hurt my feelings. Seriously, not a big deal. Not a big deal for me because you know what? Why would I be hurt by that? Why would that bother me? That if I see a man I think is attractive, he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't like my particular brand of beauty. Why my feelings be hurt by that? It's not a big deal. It really isn't. Because you know what? There's lots of men out there that do find me to be quite attractive and beautiful. And want to spend time with me and get to know me. So because one or two here may not be drawn to my type of beauty, not a problem. And I'm not, tra- like I said, there's some men that I'm totally not attracted to. Absolutely not attracted to. Might be their personality, might be their appearance. Usually it's personality more so than appearance because I just I, I know the type, the type of personalities that I get along with. I know the ones that irritate and annoy me. I know the ones that I seriously, seriously don't want to spend time around. I know the ones that I'm attracted to that 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 that, that give me that really good warm feeling inside of me because I understand who I am and I'm not going to settle. Remember. I am living art. I am a masterpiece. So I expect that those who want to partake of that beauty, want to partake of my energy, understand how to appreciate it. So please, ladies, stop with the damn coffee date. Stop with the flipping, let's meet for a drink. Because here's the excuse I've heard, and it it literally makes me laugh out loud. Well, what if we have nothing to talk about? You should have figured that out before you went out with the damn man. You could have figured that out in a few text messages. Matter of fact, I don't like texting because texting, you can't, you can't hear the voice. You can't, you know, feel the emotion behind what's being said. But you should have figured that out before you took yourself out to sit down with him anyway. You know, you could have saved both of you time, energy, and effort. And then sometimes you got to try and chase down these men when it didn't work out on the first date. Then you get all mad and, you was, and you're still trying to chase. Let it go. I see women spinning their wheels, wasting time because now they got a, they got this 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 axe to grind with the man because he didn't find her attractive. She wasn't his type. Whatever, it wasn't a good fit for either one. But now they got to burr up their ass and they feel like they got to prove a point. You know, you guys realize that's masculine, right? Men are like that. So now you're trying to match masculine energy with masculine energy, and I've told you guys before. I've mentioned this before. You're never going to win that battle. Men will always, always, a man will always outman you. Always. He's a man. He's born and raised inside that body 24-7. You're not. We all have masculine and feminine energy inside of us. Still, the physiology of who you truly are does have the dominant say. So you're never going to outman a man in the masculine energy department. Not over the long haul. You might be able to best them here periodically, but why? It's exhausting. So I'm just saying, if you guys want to be able to stand out and be able to attract to you affluent men, and real, and like I said, you're going to go through some mis- mix matches, mismatches along the way. It's a learning curve. But as you pay attention, you're taking notes, you're doing what you got to do to keep track of who it is you're meeting and your whys. Because once again, you're developing you, you're developing yourself, you're understanding what your particular needs are and your whys. Remember, you're living art. So that means you are painting your canvas. You are the artist of you. Other people can add to the canvas, so to speak, but you are the one who's choosing what's going to be on your canvas, so to speak. So as you are going through your learning curve, like I said, you're going to have some misses along the way. Of course you are. But if you take the misses and truly learn to leave them, leave them alone in the future, you become a better painter. Remember, think about when we first were little kids learning how to draw. You make the stick figures. You got the stick figure dog, you got the stick figure cat, you got the stick figure mommy and daddy, you got the stick figure you. But if you're somebody who's artistically inclined and you decide you're going to continue to study art and study that, or that could be a musical instrument, that could be singing, that could be dance, it could be whatever. We're talking about the arts right now. Because I've done three of the four. I used to be able to draw. I used to be able to draw quite, I used to draw beautifully. Uh, but once again, you don't use a skill set, it's gone. So now I went from drawing beautiful stuff to, like I said, I can barely do a stick figure. But it's okay. I have other skills. But, I'm think, but think about it. When you started out, it was tragic. It was. You're looking at the stuff going, oh, I can't believe I did that. But as you kept working on it and fine-tuning it and learning who you were and finding your voice and finding the way you want to express yourself, your art becomes better. 
Your singing becomes gorgeous. Your dance becomes breathtaking or not awe inspiring. Your art becomes something that makes people go, oh my God, I've got to buy, you know, I've got to make sure I, I have a few of these pieces before this particular artist blows up and becomes a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Picasso wasn't fantastic when he first started painting. Monet, Monet, uh, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci. I'm trying to think of some female artists right now. I can't think of anybody offhand right now. Sorry, ladies. Um, oh gosh, I, the names are on the tip of my tongue. And for some reason, I'm just not not able to figure them. I, they're not coming out. But anyway, I'm giving you names of people that you that we all know that that are familiar to us. But they weren't great when they first started. You know, the people that that sing who inspire you, they weren't great. Remember, I told you. Uh, I mentioned in an audio that I may or may not actually share. That, you know, my kids were learning how to sing. Even when I start singing, I wasn't great in fifth grade. Are you kidding me? None of us were great when we started out. But like it's over the years of me studying voice and me learning how to sing. Because I was, I told you, I did most of my stuff competitive. I, I love singing and singing competitions. I love, comp- I love competition. And, you know, going from that little fifth grader who was squeaking out, whatever she was squeaking out, to being somebody that could go stand in front of these judges in this audience and literally having somebody critique the sound of my voice, critique my technique and my judges. I always wind up getting the hardest. Ju- People would always say, oh my God, I don't want this particular judge. I'm like, why not? Because they never give out high ratings. They always have something bad to say about what you're doing. I'm like, great. And who would I have on my list? The judge that nobody, the judges nobody wanted because they were so tough. But for me, it was okay. It was a challenge. How can I do this and be able to, be able to you know, truly make an impact on these judges? Because there's nothing better when you're standing in front of those judges and while you're, while they're, you're used to, while you're sitting there and you're watching how they're judging other people, because you do go in ahead of time to see what they're doing and to watch how they're responding to the person singing. And if they're not looking up at the person and they're looking down, taking notes or looking at each other, taking notes, that's usually not a good sign for the person singing. But... If you look and you notice that for the most part they have not looked down at their cards with their pen and paper, or if they are talking to each other, they're still not looking, they're still not writing, that's good. So my goal when I would go in there and sing in front of them was to make sure that they were paying attention to me. You know, so for me, when I sing, and my father used to mention this, he goes, you get up on that stage, he goes, oh my God, he goes, he's like, he goes, you draw the entire audience into you. He goes, we sit there, he goes, he goes, I would sit there just mesmerized. Not just because you're my daughter. He goes, but just watching you, he goes, because you loved singing. He goes, you would literally make us all want to love what you were doing as much as you were loving it. So that's how I would go into my competitions the same way. Nervous and scared. Oh, my God, nerves. Let me tell you, terrified sometimes. You know, my, 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 my pianist would be sitting there with me and you know, was also sometimes my voice coach and be like, okay, just breathe. And, you know, you got this. We're okay. We're good. We're good. But when something would happen, you would finally get there in front of those judges and I'd look at them and not a smile on the face, but not a problem. And you take that first breath. And for me, once the note hits, once I begin to sing, then nothing else matters. That's art. Because you know it doesn't matter at that point in time. You're going to give it your best. And luckily I would walk out of there with, with, with top ratings. Because I would draw them in. I would make eye contact. I would, once again, my body, when I sing, I have to move. I can't, I can't be, I don't, care, I don't care if I'm singing an aria. I have to move. The music takes over. That's living art. You should be so passionate about becoming your best version of you that you can't contain yourself. Like I do when I sing, when I was singing, especially when I was singing, like I said, competitively, or performing, because I've been on stages. You know, I used to, like I said, be in musicals. I used to, you know, be in theater. I used to be on stage, and I love being on a stage. Right? I'm so quiet and, and, and reserved. You can never knew that, right? <laughs> but that's it. So when you understand that you are living art, you do the things that inspire you. You do the things that make you happy. You don't open other people's opinions. You don't let people take you on coffee dates because that's all they think you're worth. And then you agree that that's all you're worth because you agree to go on the damn coffee date with somebody. Younger ladies are doing that. Women my age are doing that. Stop it. 
value yourself if you want other people to value you. And if that means you go out on a few less dates, then you go out on a few less dates. Who cares? That time that you're not sitting in front of somebody that is basically wasting your time, whose time you're also wasting, you could be finding new ways to refine yourself. That could be time that you're using to read books to enrich your mind. And once again, guys, there's no excuse for not reading books. Because guess what? You can also get books on audios. You can download them. There's all kinds of ways to have act to bring that information. Because I realize everybody likes to sit down and read. I understand that. I just happen to be a reader. I've always been one. I like since I was very since I was a very small child. But not everybody loves to read. I've got two kids. That, well, my three kids, only one loves to read as much as me. The other two can't stand it. But we do audiobooks. I tell me, you know what? Get it on audio. Then you can listen to while you're driving. So you can always, there's no excuse for you not enriching your mind, not taking yourself and cultivating yourself. Information's out there. Google it. Bing it. I use duck, duck, go it. Whatever. No reason for you not to be cultivating yourself and adding to your, your knowledge base. Because that's also going to add to your ability to communicate and have something to talk about. Real conversation. You know, right now I'm studying stuff in reference to, um, oh my God, finance, family offices, private equity funds. That's what I'm reading about right now. Not the most exciting information, I'm not going to lie. It's not inter- It's not exciting, you know, as if I was reading about something else I was passionate about. But I understand that, once again, taking my life next level, understanding, once again, really getting into the mindset of the wealthy. Because these are things my guys do. So I need to know, I, it helps to know more about it. And some of the stuff is interesting once I take over the fact that I don't love this particular topic, but it's very beneficial to know it. And once I understand that and remember that, then it becomes easier to read about it. And then you start finding authors that actually understand how to break things down for the layman. Because there are some books out there that are very heavy in finance because it's coming from somebody who's, who's, who's passionate is finance, but they're talking this, this geared towards people in the financial industry. And then you find people that actually can write to the masses. And those are the books that I'm dealing with right now, thankfully. So they're making it not as tedious to learn about. And then I have people I can ask questions. You know, so when I'm having conversations with my guys, I can ask questions. Okay, so I was reading about ABC. What's this about? Tell me more. Do you have any recommendations for what I can read to learn more? Guys, they love that conversation. Men of affluent men love it because they love talking about money. And if they figure you're going to listen and, like, you know, allow them to offer you guidance, huh, it's a great conversation. Um, art. I don't know lots about art. I'm not going to lie and say I do. It's not one of my fortes. I didn't study art in school. But I will take the time out to read up on stuff. And once again, no excuses not to know this information. I've told you guys about one of the places I go to get it uh, to, for my favorite DVDs. It's uh, thegreatcourses.com. Love that website. And I just, I, and I, I, do, I was good this year, usually around Christmas, because they had these crazy, 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 crazy great sales around Christmas, like 80% off of stuff. It's like ridiculously cheap. Uh, this year I did not, last year I did not buy anything because I, like I said, in the process of moving and doing all these different things, I just didn't want anything extra to carry. But I will be ordering more courses. And I think this time around I'm going to get this stuff on wine and I'm going to get this stuff in reference to art because I used to study stuff. I used to read books on art. So once again, it's available to you that you can learn. You don't know everything about everything, but you can know enough, a little bit about something to start building conversations on. And if he tells you, you know what, I, this is my particular artist, artist that I like, then get information on that particular artist and go look it up. Gives you something to talk about on your next date. See, why you guys don't always wind up getting a second date sometimes? Because there's nothing to talk about after the first date. You've built no rapport with the person. You've built no, you haven't started to create any type of intimacy with them. Now, I'm not saying anything sexual. Intimacy is about connection, just so you know, a deeper connection. But like I said, when you view yourself as living art and that everything that you add to your personality, to your knowledge base, to your appearance, to understanding and uncovering who you are, that adds to your, your quote unquote canvas. That makes you more brilliant. It makes you more lively. It makes you more, more enticing. Are you hearing me? 
you know, if you want to learn about music. So for me, I'm, and, and what about masterclass.com? Oh my gosh, you see them advertise, excuse me, on Instagram constantly. They're bringing in these people that are teaching master classes, famous authors, chef. There's a gentleman who actually who took, um, he's an expert in wine, who, which I've got to join master classes. I, I always forget about it until I see the ads. Um, and I've got a few friends that actually follow it and they love it. They're actually members. And it's cheap. I think it's like $199 for the year. I mean, it's something super cheap for the year, um, which I'll be doing it probably next month. But there's all kind of information out there for you to help you fortify your, your, your skill set, for you to expand your conversations, you know, topics for conversations, to expand your knowledge base. So that you become a woman who actually can be in that space of affluence and feel comfortable. Because one of the things I get when I'm working with my clients is that they don't feel like they deserve to be in these spaces, which I get it. Once again, I told you, if you're coming out of a poverty background, even if you have progressed yourself into the middle class and you're still, you know, working on your up leveling yourself, um, or if you even come out of middle class, these are things they weren't, they don't teach you. I, I look at the stuff cause I've got friends of kids in school. I look at the stuff that I teach the kids in school. The information is so useless, so useless. And if you get to college, you have a chance to expand your knowledge base a bit more. But even that, the first two years of college, most of it is garbage. It's bullshit. You, you're repeating that you learned basic in high school. I went to college. I know. You know, the first couple of years, you know, you may take a couple of things based upon your major. But most of the stuff you're taking is basically you're rehashing information that you truthfully aren't going to use. Good gracious. You've got the college and still understand how to put together a sentence. That's a problem. If you got the college, you can't do basic math. Math? How did you get into college? How did you pass the test? I want to know. I mean, this is stuff you already know. So why are you still taking it, retaking it your first year? Of course, it's for them to make money. But I'm just saying. But you have you know more electives to pick and choose for once you're in college. But still, even college can be a waste of time if you go in there to learn something else other than just a major. So it's all about you learning how to self-educate. Adding to your canvas because this information, how does it apply to your personal brand and beauty? Because when you have things to talk about and you are vibrant and you have topics to talk about that excite you, that makes you more radiant. You glow from the inside out because you have a passion. You're passionate about something. You're excited about something that makes people curious about you. And then as you become more knowledgeable, because like I said, because a lot of my ladies tell me that they're uncomfortable. Why well, I, you know, I, I feel dumb. And I've heard them say, and I'm like, don't call yourself dumb. You're not dumb. You're just uninformed at the moment. This information you can learn. But once again, that's no excuse. So if you're going into it knowing that you that you you feel unprepared, then prepare yourself. Too much information out there nowadays. We're walking around ignorant about stuff that you know that you want to know about and you need to know about to take you to your next level. Responsibility, self-responsibility. You must choose to allow yourself to go to your next level. And you got to stop making excuses. And you guys are going to, once again, have to spend money. You have to spend money. You have to. You have, And it's not even spending. I'm going to take that word out of it. Investing. It's investing in yourself. I've told you guys, I, I do. I'm always buying stuff to help me be better. I've mentioned the fact that that Kindle app gets me in trouble. Oh my gosh. I, 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 like I said, I bought six books the other day. And I'm eyeballing probably 10 more I'm going to pick up that I can download to Kindle. And eventually some of those books, I'm going to get, hard, I'm gonna get you know, paperback or hardcovers on because I love holding a book. So I'm going to have the Kindle, and I do that. Sometimes I have the Kindle edition and the actual book for various reasons. You know, I, I'm always investing in myself. Like I said, right now, I guess I'm going through the process now of deciding where I want to take myself next for private coaching. I've been working with somebody that's about to end and it's been a great thing, but I know I, there's other stuff I want to work on and learn. So I'm going to be looking for another, another coach myself for something different that I need to learn or expand on or to, you know, or to have better knowledge and information on. Now, for me, obviously, it's not communication skills. Good God, that's what I teach. It's what I know. But there are other things I'm learning because there are some skill sets that I want to better bring to Wealthy Wife this year, especially on the side of the prosperity, that prosperity quadrant, that there's information that I want to have at hand or have access to somebody that I can bring in that's going to be able to teach my private clients and possibly my teleconference clients as well. You know, eventually the telecourse, the tele I will bring in, you know, additional teachers. 
you know, for like for a class or two in the teleseminars classes. You know, this is about, I do what I do because I guess I want you guys to be able to be your absolute best and continue to grow to become even better. You know, I don't want I don't want you guys ever feel inadequate when you're doing things. That's a, that's a horrible way to I understand that. I guess I've been there. It's a horrible feeling. You know, you walk in a room and you're like looking around going, oh my God, why am I here? Because I'll say it again. I still go to things in 2019 where I will be the only brown female in there. Periodically, there might be a brown man or two in there. But there's still times when I'm the only woman of color. I'm not kidding when I say that. In 2019. Doesn't bother me. It really, really doesn't bother me. And periodic, and sometimes, you know, there might be a couple more in addition to me. It's all good. I know I belong. I have no issues with it. I can hold my own anywhere. Because one, I'm never afraid to ask questions. And I have no problems being quiet. If I don't know a topic, if someone's talking about something I don't know anything about, I'll just stand there and listen. And then I make a comment and say, you know what, that's very interesting. Please tell me more. That's how you learn. What's that old saying? You have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You want to listen. Pay attention. Take notes. Like, you know what? I need to go jot this out. That is interesting. Do you have some recommendations for some books I can read? And I'll tell me, if you don't, wait a minute. Let me, let me get out my phone. Uh, let me pull up my little notes section. Let me write this down. Or let me send myself an email. So let me write this down. Yeah, that's very flattering for the person that you're talking to because they, and I told you this, when it comes to affluent people, men and women, but we're talking about men because we're talking about people who are going to date and potentially marry, potentially marry. It's very flattering to him that you're going to allow him to help expand your knowledge base. They love to pour into people. They truly, truly do. Wealthy people are not, oh, some of them are selfish because humans are selfish, but I'm just saying. If they see that you truly are serious about improving your life, you're serious about coming up, taking yourself next level, and you're open to receiving information, they will share information. If you ask questions, they will answer your questions. You know, most of them are not dickheads, just so you know. There's a lot of great people out there. I know this because I I talk to them and I meet them. And I've told you guys beforehand, the men that I deal with, they're not just average people. These are multi, multi millionaires. These are multi billionaires that I spend time with. They are. I'm not making this stuff up. So I'm not talking about, you know, a man who's comfortably wealthy. I'm talking about men who are incredibly wealthy. And I meet them and I spend time with them. And I'm not meeting them online, just so you know. These are men that I date. These are men that I have friendships with. These are men that are my mentors. A couple of them are my, biz- are my business coaches. And you know how I meet them and how I have met them and how they, we have stuck together basically is because I do embrace my personal brand and beauty. I am that walking, talking, living art. I am a masterpiece. And I conduct myself in the way. And that's where I want you guys to get to as well. So think about it. Where do you need, where, where do you need to work on you? Where? Who are you? I ask the question constant. You guys should be, have pen and paper. Every time I ask that question, you have pen and paper out and you should be writing it down and then thinking about it. You know, I told you guys in reference to my private coaching, that is the first assignment that they have. And I don't care if they've coached with me beforehand and they've done it before. They're going to do it again. Because you evolve, you change, you take this and you keep that and you find out that this part of your personality no longer serves you. So you discard that and you bring us something new. You are constantly evolving. And if you're not, you're dying because there's no holding pattern. You don't stay the same. You're either moving forward in life or you're aggressing. So you got to think about that. So that question always comes up. Who are you? 
because the first few times they have to answer it, they, they, they told me that's a hard, they go, that's a hard assignment. I go, I don't make it easy sometimes because I've got to break you guys out of these old patterns. I got to break you out of that old mindset. Well, I saw the whole thing about going on coffee dates. Well, you know, the men around here, they don't go on real dates. For, if I ask them to go to dinner, then they get an attitude or if we're at dinner, they want me to pay half. What the hell are you guys doing out there? I'm just asking the question. Really? Oh, you guys are not screening. You guys, the problem is you don't screen your, the men that you're going out with. That's part of the problem. And you guys are in such a hurry to make a point that you rush into stuff. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Determine what you really want. And then allow yourself to receive it. I told you guys, I've had these conversations with, with friends of mine that are and women older, especially those that are older. And I had I told you one of my, my dearest, dearest friends, like she's like, I call my little big sister. Um... Has a had a cousin that's recently getting divorced. It's getting a divorce. It hasn't been hasn't dated like in twenty some odd years, and my friend was literally asking me because she was trying to you know wants to be to uh, have a consultation with her cousin, and she's like she goes she's talking about she's going on these dates and she's paying half. She goes and my friend asked her what is that? I started laughing. I'm like going that's what they do nowadays. She goes are you serious? I'm like yeah. I go it seems to be a thing. I go I don't understand it either because. I'm not taking out my, my wallet. Um, why did you invite me out? If you can't afford to feed me, you know, we're going to enjoy a beautiful conversation. You know, I am here to enhance your life. When you are with me, I know my conversation will enhance you. I know spending time with me will expand you. And I know when men spend time with me over, to, over time with me, they also prosper with me. I understand the magic of being a woman. I understand the energy that I, that I bring to the table. I understand that when you're with me, it is a very pleasurable experience. Because I do pre-screen the guys I go out with, just so you know. So like I said, so I don't go in there assuming that he's not going to, you know, he can't handle that. Because why are you taking me out? Why? I love courtship. I love allowing a man to stand up and actually be a man. I don't know. But yeah, so so my older friends and those women that might get in my age right, age bracket that are my that are my close friends, like my sisters, you know, we do sit down and have these discussions because they love what I'm doing, by the way. They think it's fantastic. And period oh my god, cat, why are you shitting all over everything? What the hell? Man. Okay, it must be I don't know what that was, but I have never seen him shit this much before. Interesting. We must be coming into spring. A little soon for that. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. You know when the cat comes by, I get a little distracted. But anyway, think about what I'm saying in this particular audio. Think about it. Think about it. You are living art. You are a masterpiece. Become the masterpiece you're meant to be. I have mentioned some ways that you can actually expand on yourself. I have mentioned ways that you guys can actually learn how to stop selling yourself short. Stop letting these men be out cheap with you. You guys go out there and get your hair done, your nails done, you spend a fortune at Sephora on makeup, and you do all this shit to go out with these men to look all cute and beautiful. You spend a fortune on yourselves, and he takes you for coffee or a drink? Are you joking? Stop it. Stop it. Stop treating yourselves, like I said, like a dog on a scrap of paper. You're a masterpiece in the making. Identify that. So if you, once again, if you guys are ready to stop playing with this, and start really understanding how to put together that strategy and do this correctly. Beginner, beginner, in intermediate phase, advanced, doesn't matter. I work with all of you. Contact me. Uh, like I said, I'm debating on this week as to what I'm going to put, put together for the next six weeks. Uh, excuse me, six, next six-week master class. Like I said, we just finished up the, uh, the quarters on mindset. Loved it. Great class. I don't know if I want to do that one again or Rise of the Enchantress because that was a great class as well. Or the Dominatrix Secrets. Once again, I'm still debating. I will have a response. I'm praying by this weekend as to what the next class is going to be. But whatever we're going to wind up doing next, it's going to be focusing on this U.S. living art and becoming a masterpiece. We're going to be working on conversation skills, which we always do. We're going to be working on, once again, you identifying who you are so you can understand how to articulate your particular needs and stop settling you guys want to date affluent men and also defining what that means to you like i said because my level of affluent man affluent man pff, 
and what some women think is affluent or affluent. Totally different. I know that and I respect that. I do. I do. I'm just accustomed to a different level of man. Once again, I have grown into him over the years. So go ahead and contact me. I'm going to put the link as usual in the uh, description box. If you're ready to learn how to have the right strategy and to put yourself in the right headspace and mindset to truly thrive in the world of fluent dating and lifestyle, let's talk. If you're ready to finally learn how to invest in yourself, to really start learning how, like I said, to be a better version of you. Let's talk. You guys know I have these conversations because I love you and adore you and I want you guys to thrive. Like I said, I want to truly see you guys living these lifestyles that truly do inspire you and who you inspire. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than be an inspiration for a man who really can not only uplevel you, but who you in your energy space and you being the beauty and, and the masterpiece that you are inspires him to be a better version of him. Like I said, stop settling and learn what you need to do to take it next level. Talk to you guys later. Once again, Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Man Rich Man. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.